Hello AQA students, we're in paper one, paper two and paper three looking at the 15 mark question. Uh, know that the 15 mark will come up in section B of paper one and paper two. It will also come up in section B of paper three. It's exactly the same style of question in all three papers. It's an explain question. You'll need to explain some things. Uh, as an explain question, what's being tested? Well, your basic knowledge is being tested, right? With defining key terms, yes. Identifying points or policies, whatever the question is getting at, your basic knowledge is being tested. But really, this essay is a test of your depth of understanding, your depth of analysis, as well as your use of diagrams. Know that on a 15 marker, as an explain question only, you don't need any counter arguments. You don't need, on the other hand, you don't need two-sided argument. You don't need any evaluation and you don't need a final judgment or a conclusion. None of that is necessary at all. It's a short essay. You're looking at 20 minutes to write this 15 marker, whether it's paper one, paper two or paper three. It's a short essay overall. Here's how you go about writing it. You start by defining key terms that are in the question, get those in straight away. Then you're looking for two or three detailed analysis paragraphs. Remember, you've got that 20 minute time limit. So you've got to decide in that time, can you write three analysis paragraphs in high detail? Great, then go for that. If you can't, two very detailed analysis paragraphs is absolutely fine as well. There are some 15 markers out there. There are only two ways you can answer the question. There are only two analysis paragraphs you can write. So writing two in high detail will be fine in that situation, but two generally is fine as long as you can write in detail, but within 20 minutes, if you think, no, I've got loads of time to write a third, then absolutely write a third. It's two or three in high detail. What you're looking to do within those paragraphs is yes, you need to be writing depth of analysis. It's the core part of a 50 mark question. If you haven't already, go and watch my video on how to write a perfect analysis paragraph. Within that video, I give you great writing skills of how to nail depth of analysis. But yet, you've got to be writing depth of analysis, as much detail as you can to answer that question. Go for it within these paragraphs. You should be drawing diagrams. 15 markers are written whereby at least one diagram will be natural to draw. So most likely that will be in analysis paragraph one, that obvious diagram you can draw. After that, you're thinking, hmm, is there another diagram I can draw which can illustrate what I'm writing? Because that's always the trigger of when to draw diagrams. Whenever diagrams can illustrate whatever you're writing, always look to draw your diagram. So in analysis paragraph one, you may be drawn a diagram to illustrate what you're writing. Then in analysis two, is there another diagram that's useful here to illustrate what I'm writing? If you're doing a third analysis paragraph, is there another diagram that can be useful to illustrate what I'm writing? If the answer is yes, always look to draw diagrams. But if the answer is no, don't force the issue. So on a 15 marker, you might only draw one diagram. You might draw two, you might draw three. Just depends on what you're writing and whether diagrams are relevant to illustrate what you're writing. But if you do draw diagrams, you're gonna be drawing at least one. Make sure your diagrams are drawn big, they're lovely looking with a ruler, uh, that they're fully labeled, they're accurate. If you can, apply on the diagram with real world examples too. But in your writing, you must be referring to them. So shifts of curves, refer to them, AD1 to AD2, S1 to S2, refer to shifts. If there are areas of importance on the diagram, refer to them, right? So MC equals MR, profit maximization, for example. If there are any areas of relevance, refer to those, okay? If you've annotated those, maybe it's government revenue or the cost of the government or domestic producer revenue, whatever it might be, refer to those in your writing. Then you're using the diagram really well. But the whole process of how the diagram works must be in your analysis paragraph, right? Use the diagram in detail and refer to it. And yes, the expectation is in section B of paper one and paper two, you need your own real world examples to back you up. Not in paper three, because in paper three, section B or 15 marker there will be tied to extracts. So real world examples you can get from the extracts quote there, and that would be great. But in paper one and paper two, section B, your 15 and 25 marker, you need your own real world examples to back up what you're saying. So hopefully, uh, throughout the course, you've integrated real world examples into your revision notes so that you can, for all these different topic areas, link your theory to a real world example. But if you're not doing that, or you think it's very difficult to do that, I have a book to help you. This is my examples for exams pack, 
where in here you've got real world examples of everything in the course in case study form. So it's very easy to integrate these examples within your revision notes so that you're learning the theory and the example together. So that when you're writing your 15 mark, it's very easy to back up what you're saying with real world examples. So you can consider getting this if you're not uh, learning real world examples on your own or if you're struggling to find real world examples of everything in the course, you can get this from my website. But that's it guys, that's how to write a 15 marker. You see the one point of difference in paper three is that you've got extracts to help you, whereas in paper one and paper two you don't. Otherwise, it's exactly the same kind of essay. Very simple to write. So thank you so much for watching. You can smash this now. I'll see you all in the next video.